Hello everyone. This is an instructional video for a new module within the program Ticker, uh, which is called Mandala. The intent with this module is to create something with which I could create patterns for CNC cutting, uh, similar to those mandalas you see if you Google the, the word itself. Um, the word mandala is used to define all kinds of different forms of art, which really is symmetrical round shapes traditionally. Uh, my goal, though, was to have a way to create patterns that are aesthetically pleasing and that lend themselves to cutting or laser engraving, because that takes a whole new, a whole different format than just the traditional graphic mandalas. So, um, with this, my intent was to use these things as decorations for wooden boxes or perhaps as a signature pattern for one that I might find that I really like. There is almost no parameters here. Um, there's a great many used internally, but I thought the easiest path was to simply create random uh, aesthetic patterns. And then when a person sees one they like, they could process it for CNC cutting. Uh, so I've been just clicking the random button while I'm speaking here so that you can get an idea of what these patterns look like. Um, so, with that having been said, let's take a look at uh, how to control it from the start. When you bring up a uh, ticker, you're normally on this screen and by hitting the SimCAD button up here in the top, we go to the CAD package that's a part of ticker. And I've added one button next to the recoil escapements and that's Mandala. And it will open up a very simple dialog. The most important button on this dialog is the Create Random button down here. And each time you hit it, a new randomized pattern will be created. Uh, these are created with various uh, algorithms and transformers. And they're, they randomize their parameters as you create them. So the idea here is to find one that you like. And you can modify them. Uh, modify the way they're searched in this stats box here at the top. The output name is going to be the file name when you save the output from these things. Your output diameter uh, will, of course, be the diameter of the entire item. Most of them are round, but this diameter even applies if they are square. Um, the reveal here is important because it controls how much these items step down. If we look at one polygon in this area, you can see that it's stepping down at a rate of one millimeter uh, per inside polygon. If we change that, for example, changing that to 0.5 and hitting regen, we'll get more layers. This layers box is just read only. It's, it's there as an information box to you. So with a 100 millimeter diameter and a 0.5 millimeter reveal, we end up with eight layers. And you can see more layers have appeared uh, in those areas. Uh, what I thought I would do is create, find a pattern that I like. Actually, this one here doesn't look too bad. And I would create the three types of output, and I'll show you the results of those outputs um, when cut. Uh, I'll probably even show them to you cutting, so you can get an idea of what these three outputs are for. Because there are only three outputs at the moment, I do not yet put out a DXF output. I'm not sure how useful a DXF would be where you're going to get a whole bunch of polygons inside others. You'll spend hours uh, selecting them for various layers. And it would be very error prone picking which ones are uh, actually belong to each layer from a DXF. So what I've done is I've created three possible outputs. One is a G code of multiple layers, one file per layer. And what that means is that we will end up cutting a top layer, which is all, which is basically the white area of this drawing. Uh, and then subsequently, each layer would cut further and further into its polygon count. And that's typically how a CNC multi-layer mandala looks. And if you uh, check them out on Google, you'll see that there's quite a few of them. Uh, then our second opportunity is all G-code layers on a single output for texturing. Uh, if you're running a laser, or, or CNC for that matter, if you're using like a V-point bit, this selection will create an interesting texture on the wood from the pattern. Um, it turns out to uh, look very nice depending on the texture, and I've been surprised at times uh, just how well they look. Third one is one that if you have a laser which can do uh, depth engraving, 
you can have a grayscale output of this with uh, white being the top and black being the furthest down layer in a grayscale throughout. Uh, Augie, for example, cuts 3D engravings from that kind of file. So we have those three types of files, and whenever that you'd like to have an output for one, you just select the one you want, hit Save Output, and it will tell you where the file is and the fact that it's been saved as grayscale. Um, the same thing with these G-code files. And what I'll do is I'll generate um, from this, I've got a, we'll, we'll keep the parameters as they are. When I select the multi-layer, you can see 16 files have been exported. That means there's 16 layers in this uh, drawing for cutting. I'll also cut the second one, which is all layers on a single output for texturing. We'll save that as well. And uh, that's it. Now we have all three possible outputs from this particular uh, drawing. And I'll be back shortly to show you what that looks like when it's cutting and what it looks like as the final result on an engraving. I'll be using my Galvo laser for these experiments. Um, back in a minute. Okay, so here we are in Augie, and I wanted to uh, load the... I'm going to load Pattern Texture. Uh, and I wanted to load it in here so I could make a point about the G-code that I put out. You'll notice uh, that the G-code, now that you can see it, is just a series of G-0s and G-1s. And that's because in Augie, I enable my uh, laser power supply in order to turn on the laser, but to enable cutting, I use a single line M3S100. I'll execute that and then go back to G-code and I can run. G-0s won't cut, G-1s will. So if you have a laser run on uh, G-code where G0 is a move and G1 is a cut, you're all set with no options selected on that dialog in ticker. If, on the other hand, you're going to cut using uh, CNC patterns uh, on a CNC table and you need Z control, or if you need to use an M3, M5 combination to turn the laser on or off for each polygon, you can also check those and those will be added to the system. Um, this is the how it looks on the screen once we load that last uh, picture. And if we run it, you can see it runs pretty quick. And one of the features of the G-code is that it separates the polygons by layer to keep the cuts as far apart as possible. Uh, this stops any heat buildup if you're cutting a flammable material and ends up for a nicer cut. And so this is what it looks like when it's uh, cutting on my Galvo laser. I've got my rapids turned down a little bit, but it gives you an idea of uh, the order in which it cuts and how it keeps that distance to keep the temperature down. Um, the next video clip will show you a quick glimpse of what it looks like to cut the 3D, um, 3D grayscale engraving uh, photograph. Uh, just a second here and I'll switch over to that. And here we can see it cutting the first layer on a raster uh, 3D engraving from the grayscale photo that I'll show you here in a second. This grayscale photograph will create 16 different layers. And here's the end results. This multi-layer paper example is not from the example that I made earlier. Um, I didn't feel like cutting 15 or 16 more sheets of paper, so I just used one that I've already done previously. But here you can see how the various layers overlay one another to come up with a, uh, with a pattern. So here's a couple of the quick examples of uh, things that I've done over the last couple weeks playing with this module. I hope you enjoy it and have some fun with it. Uh, leave any comments on the forum to let me know if you'd like alternate forms of output or anything like that. And have fun!